Hi guys, my name is Chrissy Pooh, and I want to share some information with you about a, hmm, not a disease, but more so a underlining health condition that attacks the immune system. It's called CIPD. CIPD stands for Chronic Inflammatory Demyelinating Polyneuropathy. I have been dealing with CIDP for 12 years now, and it has been um, very, very horrifying roller coaster ride. But I've maintained to last this far without minimum to barely none medical treatment. So I went on my own research path to decide what I feel like is best for me. Disclaimer, I am not suggesting that anybody that has CIPD to do what I say, or take heed to what I say and try what I say, always confide in your doctor before you decide to do choices that can um, potentially harm your body or make matters worse. But throughout my research, I was aiming for a natural-based um health resort that can help me maintain a healthy immune system and also get my strength back my muscles stronger and my nerves back restored from them being damaged so here are some of the things that I had came up with that you can eat that can help your nerve system. Here are a few. So we have berries, peaches, cherries, red grapes, oranges, and water, watermelons. We also have, among others, are loaded with antioxidants, which help to decrease inflammation and reduce nerve damage. And cranberry has been found to be full of powerful anti-inflammatory compound called reservatrol. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but I will include the name right here. So moving forward, if you eat those types of vegetables and fruits and such things um, like that, I'm pretty sure there are other food compounds out there that also can help your nervous system. Also, while you are eating a healthy diet, you need to implement in your daily life exercise, warm baths, cayenne pepper, meditation, vitamins, and things that have reservatrol in them. Once again, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but I will include it again right here. So that was just a brief little um, guide into what you can do to help with your CIDP. Once again, another disclaimer, I am not a doctor. I am not a nurse. I do not have my degree or training in nutrition or any of such sort. This has just came from me researching online some things that you can do to maintain a healthy, 
a healthy balance when it comes to you having an autoimmune disease such as CIDP, which is again called chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. And what that is, is when the nerves are damaged, your body starts to attack itself. And they, in some circumstances, don't know why. It could be maybe something you came in contact with. It could be an allergic reaction to something. It can also be amongst many other things, as in it may be hereditary, and it could be passed down along in the family. But with my situation and my circumstances, they could not find out what was the cause of my CIDP? And that's where the frustration came in with me is because if you don't know why or how, then what happens if I come across what caused it in the first place again? Will it be deadly? Would it be critical? And that's where I tend to get frustrated dealing with doctors because they don't have the answer to that. So I decided to take upon myself to try to find other ways that can possibly help boost my immune system and try to stop my body from attacking itself. For one, when this came on, I was not living a healthy life. I was not eating and dieting. I was not exercising. I was actually partying, getting myself into trouble, having a lot of traumatic events um, in my life, causing a lot of distress in discomfort in the brain itself in alone the body so i feel like that may what be had had caused the onset of my cidp i have not went and got a second opinion yet from an outside doctor meaning like out of the state doctor um, because it seems that where I'm from, the people that my doctor recommends me to, they are all a part of the same circle. So they have their own network and that is where I'm being referred to. So I feel like for me to get a really good outlook on what is going on with me, what is actually wrong with me, then I'll have a better chance probably um, traveling outside of the state, doing some more research on these doctors and finding the right one that can possibly help me with the problem that I am having. So, I don't know if I explained early on in the video, but CID is chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. And what neuropathy is, is dealing with the nerves. So what I have is nerve damage. And the word chronic is very severe. So I have a severe case of nerve damage. And poly means many or a lot or a surrounding and that's where that stems from. I have nerve damage in patches all over my body. It first started in my legs. Sorry. It first started in my feet and in my hands. And when I first noticed it, it started with me itching very, very badly, as if I was having an allergic reaction. 
I'm telling you, I was itching so bad to the point where I was getting ready to go to the doctor because this was not no regular itching. It was an internal itch. It was an itch that I could not scratch, but yet I was still determined to scratch it, hoping to get some type of relief but nothing ever came from it. So after about maybe four to six hours of me literally itching and scratching myself, it started to subside. The next day, I had problems doing regular chores around the house, such as putting my clothes on, tying my shoes, lighting a lighter, because at the time I used to smoke, I could not light my lighter. It was as if my muscles were li literally giving out on me and the strength and the energy that I had, had been completely depleted. I had to have help with people unbuckling my pants because I did not have the strength to unbuckle my pants to use the restroom or nor did I have the strength to even put my pants on to buckle them back up. And it was very, very frustrating and it was very, very emotional at the time because I did not know what was going to happen moving forward in my life. I thought that maybe I was going to become crippled and be in a wheelchair and I was never going to be able to live out the rest of my life playing with my children um, being a soccer mom, going to fun places like um, amusement parks, going swimming, because that's exactly how it feels. It literally felt like I could not walk. But I kept pressing on. I kept going to work despite how I looked because when I would walk, I would walk as if I looked at like I had got shot in my leg or I had an amputated leg with a fake leg on me. And that is exactly the best way I can describe this to you guys. I literally was, it was beyond a limp. It was more so... When you see me walking, it looked like a disabled person that maybe had something wrong with their legs. And um, it was quite disturbing for a while. You see my f face at the time. Keep in mind, this was 12 years ago when this rapid onset happened and it was very severe. So... I was very young looking in the face and when you see me, you see people looking at me and you see them looking at the way I walk and they're asking questions. Why are you walking like that? And I would just simply tell them, I don't know. I went to the emergency. They said that it is a, a, neuro, a, neuro, a neurological disorder. And that was all I could tell them because at that time we had no more information. So now here I am moving forward 12 years later. It Things did get better because I fought against it. The walking did get better. I don't no longer walk like very, very hard. It was like a very... Uh, the pace that I was walking was like at a pace um, where I would say it was very hard and 
disoriented. There was no coordination or balance when I walked. And now I was able to gain some control with that. And I got very discouraged. And in this 12 years of me dealing with the CIDP, I was off and on going to the doctors because I was in denial about what they were telling me what was wrong with me. I didn't believe a word that they said. I just felt like it didn't make any sense and it wasn't resonating within my spirit. So I just said, no, this isn't right. I need to go somewhere else and find another opinion. But of course, it's in the same network. So I go somewhere else and they say, you know, basically the same thing the last doctor says. And then I go somewhere else and then finally I hear what I want to hear and they say, I don't think that this is what caused your CIDP. I think that your body is attacking itself because it was exposed to something that um, basically your body rejected. Now that made sense to me. So that's when I decided to continue with those doctors and I kept getting testing, a lot of blood work. And the testing is very, very painful. To some people can take pain, but to me, it literally felt like a taser zapping you. So the name of the test is called EMG and NCS, and they hurt like Moving heck. Forward, they couldn't really do anything with me until I stayed consistent going to the doctor. So what that means is they couldn't diagnose me and treat me until I went fully through the process of letting them pick and poke and poke me until I was basically a lab rat. So I let them do what they did. And at the end of that, they finally diagnosed me with the CIDP. And then the treatment that they wanted to put me under was called IVIG treatment. And I'm hoping I'm saying this right. If I'm not, I will put the correct wording right here. But that is the treatment that they wanted to put me on. I've heard that some cancer patients have been on it and I did not feel comfortable when I first heard that that's what they wanted to put me up under because I did not really know the outcome of it and I didn't know how my body would respond to it. So therefore, I spoke with a man a provider or someone like the guy that issues the medication. He talked to me and his whole job was to make me comfortable, tell me all the information that I needed to hear to make me feel as, as content as possible. So in this point in time, I said, well, hey, I've been dealing with this problem for 12 years. And in the midst of these 12 years, there will be little spurts of things that will happen, which I would call flare-ups. And there's been many flare-ups that had me scared to death. Like one flare-up was my hand got stuck like this and I could not open it. It freaked me out and it stayed like this for two weeks. Another situation that happened to me, which was another flare up, was I could not feel my whole right butt cheek. And it was very, very uncomfortable. Not only could I not feel my whole right butt cheek, but I could not feel the inner parts of my leg which is leading to the private part area. And that scared me to death. Because now you're dealing with 
my motherhood. And I did not want that to be tampered with because I do want to be able to still adventure down there. I still do want to be able to have children. So that's when I ran back to the doctor and said, you have to do something about this because now it's interfering with my private area and it's become so numb that I cannot feel it. So that's when they went in and they really got to work and said, okay, we're really going to figure out what is causing all of this, uh, these problems where you keep getting these flare ups. And also another flare up that I had that was very alarming to me. One day I woke up and my eye was cross-sided. And I at first thought, okay, I'm just waking up. So it's really nothing to be concerned with. When you first wake up, you get sleep in your eyes. You're taking time to kind of just wake up and open your eyes and process that you're still alive. So I basically... Um, after going through that, um, and I realized that I was still alive and my eye still was cross-sided and I was seeing double, that really freaked me out. And that lasted for two weeks as well. But the only thing about this situation with my eye is my eye, or I should say, eyes because they intermittently go cross-sided not just one eye goes cross-sided they both go cross-sided so intermittently when my eyes would do this um um at first i couldn't control it but as the weeks went on it became to a point where it started to subside and I started to be able to see clearly face to face as I'm looking at you right now. But I did notice that if I would look at a screen for a certain period of time, or if I'm at work and I'm moving at a fast pace and I'm lifting heavy things and I'm up under stress, these are what triggers my eyes to go cross-sided or I would should say have a laziness to it where it may drift off and I was like, dang, I thought this was over with. I thought that I was done with this. But now it's seeming like it may be something that may be um, permanent. And I don't want to speak that into existence. It's just it's been so long since I've had the onset of my eye going cross-sided to now today that I still have the problem where my eye still goes cross-sided. It's just that I'm able to control it and make it go back straight. Now, there is some times where I cannot let it go back straight because I will get overly tired or overly stressed and sometimes I would just let it sit there like I'm not gonna fight with you if you want to go look over there go ahead and look over there if you want to look up there go ahead and look up there but I'm not gonna keep fighting with you because what it does is is putting more stress right here onto my brain so I decided to re- Lax and not fight with my eyes when they start to do that. So now moving on, like I was saying, now here we are today. I just recently about maybe a few months ago, the doctor persuaded me to do the IVIG. 
I did the IVIG one session, never went back again. First of all, they had a hard time finding a vein. And then not only did they have a hard time finding a vein, I feel like they were very rushy, they were very pushy, and they were very annoyed at the fact that I wasn't an easy vein getter. So they just tried three times and said, we give up, we can't do it. So we're just going to patch her up and send her on our way. And I didn't like that because I know that you can get a vein from me. It's just these doctors didn't want to sit there and actually take their time to find the vein. Um, That's a whole nother story that we will get into later. But I went on ahead and talked to the provider or the guy that was so adamant about getting me on to this IVIG treatment. And I told him that I think this is not going to work. He said he wants to put me on a different treatment plan. And this is where, once again, the lab rat comes in and I don't want to be a lab rat. After I spoke with him, I told him that later on when I make a decision and I calm down, I will call him back and see what we can do later on. So that was the end of my journey with that. After that, I started throwing up and I would throw up like and like it would be sporadically like at moments that that were just random after having the IVIG treatment like I was sick to my stomach I literally was puking out my stomach lining. I had nothing else to puke out. So at that point, I just told the guy that, um, you know, I don't think that this is something for me and I'm just going to go on to another treatment plan and I will thank you for helping me out. But this is just something that that's not going to work for me. And he said, you know, thank you for your honesty. And I hope to hear back from you. Now I sit and I am literally at loss for words. Because I've been dealing with this for 12 years now. I can't find a doctor that knows what's going on with me. What did I come in contact with that had this attack my body in the first place? And how can I get my strength back? Because your nerves are attached to your muscles. And if your nerves are damaged, then it has an effect on your muscles. So when I'm doing certain things, it looks awkward because my muscles aren't working together with my nerves and it's causing me to drop things. Sometimes I may be heavy handed at times because I can't feel. There's other times where I can be walking with my house shoes on and one house shoe would be all the way at the other end of the hallway. And here, by the time I get to the refrigerator, I look down and I realize that I only have one house shoe on. 
it's been circumstances where I've stepped on people's feet for an extended period of time. And they said, oh my God, you're on my foot. And I would look down and I'm like, oh my God, I am so sorry. I did not feel me stepping on your foot. So this are some of the, you know, um, these are some of the symptoms that come with this um, disorder. Um, and it's very disturbing. It sometimes get very, very sad. And you want to be able to just be normal again. I used to be able to wear heels. I can no longer wear heels anymore. You know, I'm going to stop saying that because I want to give myself hope one day that I will be able to wear heels again because I love being a pretty girl. I love wearing dresses. I love uh, makeup. I love dressing in high fashion. Um, well, not high fashion, but it looks high fashion. It's not what you wear, it's how you wear it. <laughs> Cause I don't have that much money to be literally wearing high fashion, but you get my drift. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's basically pretty much um, what I'm going through at this moment. Um, I take everything day by day i do need to start working a lot more on exercising i do need to start working a lot more on my diet and i think that once i implement those two things together along with meditating a lot of people say prayer um once i get all that all balled up together and conscrewed, I think that I can fight the CIDP. And another thing as well, I really don't want to claim it because I really don't know what it is. I just know the surface of what it is. Um... I really am still in denial about the whole CIDP thing. Nobody in my family has it. And um, I just, I don't know. I just feel like moving forward, I'm gonna start saying more positive things. Like, um, I am healthy, I am strong. I am able, I am capable, I am learning, I can succeed, I will succeed, I am determined, I am driven, I am ambitious, I am loved, I am caring, um, I am beautiful, um, I, you know, just so many affirmations out there that you can just start speaking. And I think that's what I'm going to start implementing in my life as well. Because when you start getting down on yourself and you start saying what the doctors are saying, then it starts to stick in your head. And then you start really believing it. And then your body starts actually moving as such your body starts moving like you have CIDP your body starts acting like you have um uh, cancer or uh strokes or whatever other disorder that may be out there once you get that bad news from a doctor it's literally registered in your brain and you think about it every day. Like, am I going to be here to see my children graduate? Am I going to be here to see another year? And instead of thinking those thoughts, the thoughts that you should be thinking is, 
I can't wait to see my children graduate next year. I can't wait to see my goals prosper next year. I can't wait to wake up tomorrow morning. I am blessed. Things of that sort is what needs to start leaving our mouths on a daily basis. And trust me, you will, you will see a major difference. So I just want to say thank you for watching my video. I hope it wasn't long-winded, but it was an informational video. So I tried to briefly give you as much information that I knew so that you guys can sort of have more of an idea of what CIDP is and the struggles that goes along with it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and make sure you hit that notification bell. And I'll be seeing you soon in my next videos. Thank you. Bye.